saying it's a bit squishy, but we're all here. Um, so the next up we have Sergei Gazinkov, and the tutorial is on um, TCP dump and Wireshark. All right, thank you. Cool. Thank you. Okay, so has everybody got Wireshark TCP dump installed? Everybody, right? Great. Does anybody run from source code? There's one person, cool. Um, can uh, you guys do like one thing just before we start, like Wireshark minus minus version? Or T-Shark minus minus version as well? So what version are you running? Huh? 2.01. One, 102? Great. What is it? Version 1? Okay. Well, there's been some, some bugs, but functionality-wise, it should just work, whichever it is. Um, cool. Well, before we start the tutorial, I would like to get an idea of actually why people would use any traffic captures, or why they would use Wireshark. Debug, debugging what? Okay, so the, the answer or suggestion was like for debugging, when there is not enough information in the logs, for example, and we would like to find, like we need that information for the debugging. SSL uh, negotiation analysis. SSL, so the answer was SSL negotiation analysis, and what about it? So that, that was troubleshooting for you, troubleshooting. So, but anybody, any other uses besides troubleshooting? Sorry? But that is again troubleshooting. So when you, you do not have access, so something is wrong, right? Okay, any other uses? Do we have a microphone? Just can you can you help with this? Reverse engineering Internet of Things to see what are they sending plain text or not. Gotcha. When troubleshooting hardware and you don't know what the IP address is of the unit you've got and you're not on the same subnet and so you can't ping it and all of that. Yep. There's more. To make sure my smart TV is only saying nice things about me. <laughs> yes. So that is more about, so basically it's, it's more about clarifying, oh, there's another person. Using as an education tool to demonstrate to people exactly how a wire protocol works with a real life demonstration. For teaching, cool. So basically it seems like the main uses are either uh, security wise, when you need to understand actually what is happening in a network that there is no extra traffic going out or coming in, or like for troubleshooting, that you need to find out what is over there, or as a learning tool, which is like, uh, uh, as you mentioned, which for me is the, was one of the biggest ones as well. Because quite often there is no documentation at all on some products. Also the documentation can be wrong. Or you can be um, using documentation to edit configuration file, but you are editing the wrong file or the configuration file just doesn't take any effect and all the changes are absolutely useless. Okay. Um, so does everybody have a web, uh, sorry, GUI version of uh, Wireshark as well? You do? So when, whenever you, are, there are like, there is a command line which is called T-Shark and there is a web version as well. Uh, web version, it looks like something like this for a Q2 version, or it might look like, like this for a GDK version. Everybody's got that as well? Yep. Great. Which version are you running? Like this one? Yeah. Yeah. Most people are running this one, yeah? And this? Anybody runs this? Yeah. Great. Yeah. 
Uh, actually not, because if you look at the Wireshark, it'll say 2.1. So both of them are version two. All right. So right, right now, Wireshark for the GUIC uh, has two web interfaces temporarily. It has a GTK interface, we should head from the days of the ethereal, like from whatever, 20 years ago. And the newer version, which is a QT. Uh, the newer version is, is kind of QT. In the future, there will be just QT left. But it was only released as a production starting with 2.0 release and will be dropped in a few releases. The main reason for a QT version is because most of the Wireshark users are actually Windows users, running it on Windows. And uh, Qt has a native support for Windows, native. So everything looks much nicer there. So it is not easier to design, uh, to program things on Qt for the Wireshark developers. Okay, great. So I will show like most of the stuff probably will, since majority are running Qt, I'll show it in the Qt, but it doesn't really matter. So if you open like the, by the way, do you prefer like command line, or you prefer command line, or like GUI? Both. Who wants just command line? Like, okay, and uh, GUI. Okay, less people GUI. Okay, cool. Well, let's do the command line. Um, so oh, on the command line, you do try to TCP dump minus uh, capital D or T-Shark minus capital D. Which should give you exactly the, basically the same output. You will see something different specific to your machines. Not the same as mine. Has everybody got an output? Yeah. Great. If you do not, do you see your network card? You do, like the, the real one. If some of you do not see it, you might need to add yourself to the Wireshark, like user group, right? If you're running it as a normal user. So, well, let's just try, let's just try T-Shark. Just run T-Shark as is. There's no interfaces, nothing. Do you see any traffic? Everybody sees traffic? Huh? Lots of iPhones. Lots of iPhones, right? Everybody see something? Nobody got an error? Nothing? Huh? You don't? So yes, no? What? No? Anybody got an error? Anybody got any errors or just no? Silent. Okay. It's something. Okay. Well, if it's doing something, you can generate some traffic as well. You can uh, basically just open another tab and uh, and ping yourself. Okay. So basically, by default, if you do not specify the interface you want to capture on, it captures on the first active interface. Okay. That's a nice default, and I wish every single application had a default like this. But you do not have to use it, you can specify directly. Okay, and you want to specify an interface, this one, which is my wireless card. Sorry? Okay. Um, well, there's not much. Okay, we'll pay attention to that. What about now? Now it's better, yeah? Okay, cool. So you can specify the interface you're capturing on, and uh, or you can specify any. So what is any? Any, any is a cooked capture. 
It's not available on all platforms. You cannot run it like I think on Windows you can run it, on some other platforms. But basically what it does, it will run it not just on W, whatever, on your main interface, but on any interface. Um, for example, if you, if I will be pinging myself, right, uh, then I should see it here in the cooked one. Let's specify a filter. Are you? Uh, yeah. Maybe you're using, uh, if you create a split up down, you put a small window. Okay, down. let me. Uh, okay, let me try. Give me one sec. Is this, can you see everything? Yep. Great, cool. So basically, do something like what I did, yeah? When, when, when you're running, just run capture on any interface. And uh, uh, then you should see the basically traffic. Well, first of all, try capturing on basically as is. But add a filter like ICMP. So what that will do is that will capture only ICMP traffic. You should not see it like, and start pinging yourself in a different window. So I'm not seeing anything right there, right? Nothing. Because this is a different interface. But if you add like, are you capturing on any interface? Then you should see the traffic, right? Okay, that's clear. So what we've been doing right now is we've been just like basically capturing, but whatever we saw went on the screen and just disappeared. That's not always what we want. We want to keep the information for future use. So what, do, what, do we, what, what switch do we use for that? How do we write a file? W, right? So let's set that switch and write to some file. Uh, well, let's create a temporary directory. Uh, let's call it whatever, tutorial. So that it is clean. And let's write basically to the, some file. Let's call it SMP, whatever. You can. Um, okay. So filter must come last. That's why it's complaining. Uh, generate some other traffic as well, like go to a website, maybe open your browser. Let's do something. Um, okay, let me close this. Wait. Okay. I'll open a different browser. Okay. Okay. So any traffic you want, right? Just generate any traffic. Write it to a file. Whenever you want to stop writing, what you can do is just say type control C. That'll stop writing. Or, obviously, you're not on the service. You wouldn't wait for the like control C. You would do something else, right? You need to do the, the capture to stop automatically. What you can do is you can say, okay, specify the number of packets you want to capture and then stop. That's C, for example. Let's do like minus C, 10. And I will actually, yeah, I will not even write this to a file. I just wanna, I'll remove the minus W attribute. and uh, specify minus C. So what do we see is stopped after 10 packets. Everybody's got this? No? So whatever, you can specify anything. You can specify one packet, and then I'll stop after one packet. 
five packets, whatever it is. So this, this switch, minus C, is super useful. Not just for, cap for writing files, capturing, but also for reading files. Uh, well, basically all you need to do is this. That's it. Just minus C. So this is super useful if you're working with like big files. Files that are like whatever, megabytes and gigabytes, and you do not want to dump them, right? Everything to the command line. You just, when reading, you can, uh, when reading file to read a file, you specify minus R switch. And uh, specify the file that you wrote, for example, whatever it was. When I read that file, I see many packets, right? But if you specify minus C, for example, four packets, it'll only show four packets for you. Question, sorry. Yes. Yes, yes we can. Yes, we can. So for example, and we'll talk about this. Well, um, when you read this file, yes, you can basically specify read capture, you can specify a capital Y, and say, I, uh, well in this case, it, I, uh, okay, I'll remove this. ICMP will only show ICMP traffic. Was there an HTTP? There wasn't an HTTP. Uh, yep, sorry? Uh, ARP, great. Nothing. Uh, because, okay, because this was a cooked picture, uh, capture, one thing to really understand, if you are capturing on any interface, you will not actually see Ethernet packets. Let's, let's, let's do it, we can do it, okay, let's see what we can see. If you do capital V, it'll show you more information about a packet. So once again, so I'm saying I want to display only one packet, only one packet, and capital V uh, show as much information about it as, as, as possible. I will pipe this into less. And what we see here, you see uh, it's a Linux cooked capture. And all the information that you would normally see in the Wireshark is here as well. So that's capital V switch. I'll do another capture. Um, okay. Okay, there's much more there. Cool. Okay. Um, so in this capture, which I didn't do on the, which uh, wasn't on the cooked interface, you can see the IP and everything else here, right? Okay, uh, so how many capture files have we got already? Like, just one, couple? So do a few captures, like you start and stop it, do a few, few of them, like I did. Do another capture and like stop it, whatever. So have a few files, like capture files to have a look at. Okay, then uh, basically you have these files, whatever, like for me it's two files. How can you get information about them? Well, you can do LSLH to get a, an idea of the size, right? Uh, but the reason, how to get information about a capture? Capinfos command will actually show you uh, much more information about, about this capture file in particular. So run cap infos against your capture file. So that was cap infos and your capture file. Everybody sees it? Great, cool. So what do you see? 
So you see here, basically, when the picture was, uh, capture was started, how many packets were there, when did it finish. You will also see like uh, the time resolution. Like in this case, this is like nanoseconds. And a filter string, which is a very interesting one. So if you did like capture file, capturing with a filter, whatever ICMP or whatever it was, then you will see the filter here. So let me do another one like with a filter. Uh, oh, okay, interesting. What happened? Okay. Yep. Okay. Great. So let's do another whatever example to whatever capture. And specify whatever filter you want. For example, you can specify whatever. You can do ICMP. That was an easy one, right? Or you can specify host. And you want when you capture only for a particular host. For example, whatever. 888. And then uh, only if I will ping that host, will I see that in the capture file. Nope, oh, I don't see it. Sorry? You're just saying not? Okay. For example, in the case of ICMP, um, you just say not ICMP. And then you will not see any ICMP traffic there. And so that, the interesting bit is that when you do gap infos, as I mentioned, you will see the, the exact string that you used for the capture file. These are find very useful, right? You also see what interface this was done on, the capture was done on. Do you see that? Great. Uh, you don't have to display all information. You can just display like whatever, the first, like first time or the end time or like whatever type of the file. So you, it's a, it's a cap info is like it has multiple options. Basically, all that information that you see, when displayed by default, you can um, do it. Please notice that this is like a, this information like is only some of it is only available in pcap and g format. So there are two like big formats for writing files for capture files, uh, both developed by the TCP dump project, the people. The pcap and a new one, pick up ng. So if I will dump uh, on my machine, I will dump um, TCP dump, uh, some traffic, uh, traffic, whatever, and TCP dump. Um, okay. And then we'll do cap infos against that file. Oh, no, zero packets. Okay, why is that? Okay, uh, he wants to take on his tool. So, interface. Okay, interface one. So, the interface you don't have to specify by the full name, you can just specify a number. But I'd kind of recommend, recommend against that because it, it can change. It can change within a couple of minutes. Whenever you, like, you switch off your wireless or whatever, then all the numbering changes. Zero packets still, okay. Uh, why is that? Okay. 
Okay. Okay, I don't know what's with the network. I, so basically, there are two kinds of filters, right, that you should understand. There is a Wireshark filter, also called a display filter, yeah. and there is a capture filter. Okay, so I thought it's basically that, and then you capture filter, 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 uh, so basically what happened right now, I think it just went into the monitor mode. And uh, when it's in the monitor mode, like wireless, then it might, normal traffic might not go through. That's probably what happened. Um, okay. But basically, uh, talking about the uh, filters, so there are two types of filters. One filter is that are for the capture, that are for the PCAP library. They uh, and TCP dump filters, yeah, that's, that's one thing. The other one is for the Wireshark. They're absolutely relevant. So Wireshark does not actually understand any, uh, any capture filters at all. It does not understand them at all. So if you try to put them in, it will say, now what is it? So it can pass them on to the PCAP library for the capture, but it doesn't actually, you cannot filter them with them. But you can use like Wireshark filters for that and vice versa. TCP dump has no idea about Wireshark filters. The filters are a little bit different. Um, uh, okay. Okay, so what's happening? embarrassing, but okay. Um, well, I'll just work with the capture files. I know we were not going to, uh, uh, you don't like, some of you don't like GUI, that's fine, but I'll show you a few tricks about the GUI that can be useful, that actually will affect the command line, okay? So if you open a GUI interface, in the GUI interface you can open the files that you have basically captured, for example, right? Try to open them. Sorry. Should come back. So can, can you open a file in the, in the web GUI? Okay, great. Uh, so when you open that file, um, I'll show how it will affect the command line after that. Uh, at the bottom corner, like bottom left corner, do you see like some kind of a thing, thingy there? Like it's something round, right? So you just click on that. Do you see something like warnings, anything interesting? Nothing? It's all clean? You didn't try enough? Go to Microsoft.com. Nothing? Nobody sees nothing, right? Okay, so basically the color of this will be different 
It can be red, it can be yellow, depending on basically what is the highest error level for your capture file. You can do the same thing like on the command line. So that's cut off from the screen. Sorry, the which one? The little ball that we're supposed to be. Oh, apologize. Is this better? <coughs> better? Huh? Okay. So I was talking about this one. This small. <coughs> this one. Okay. Close. Yeah. Oh, horrible. Okay. So command line will be better. Okay, well, that's kind of what you would see, right? So this is where when uh, t -shark comes in useful. You can do the same thing, like, so it'll show you what it sees as suspicious about the, about the capture that you have, or any errors that you have about the capture. I'll open another one. Uh, so you, you'll see, you can see something in different colors, red, whatever. So you can do the same thing like uh, on the command line. If you read the same file, tshark minus r, uh, whatever, the, whatever the capture file that you did. In my case, I'll let it be whatever, Google HTTPS Firefox. Then specify my, minus q and then minus z and say expert. You don't see it. Like this one? So this is what I'm talking about. Oh, you don't have try using without it. Try without it. I? So basically, queue is quiet. It makes sure that basically you do not see the packets at all. You only see the expert information. Does everybody can see something there? Like, what are the other options for this? Uh, okay, great question. Uh, well, first of all, after the expert, you can just specify comma and say what kind of, what do you want to see? What kind of debug level you want to see? If you specify, like for example, warning. Then it'll show you the warnings and the buff. If you specify like node, it'll show you the node and, and the buff. So this can give you a quick info about your capture file. Yeah. Uh, to see all uh, basically possible options, just type some nonsense. Oh no, it didn't work. Uh, okay, Z. Just basically say something like that. And it'll list you all the possible options that you can use. And this is the coolest part about like T-Shark that I find. So all the information that is available in the GUI is available here as well. One of the more, like, more useful ones, I will say, for example, you can say hosts. Try that. And so you can basically get the information about all the hosts that, that are in your capture file. Right. That only works with the cap engine. That, uh, I, I think it's both of them. Both of them should be fine. So the big difference between pcap and pcap ng would be resolution of time resolution. PCAP can only support up to like basically uh, microseconds, while PCAP NG nanoseconds. PCAP NG can store your uh, comments that you leave about the files. 
you can really do them, well, you can do the comment on the whole capture file on the command line, but you can't do it on a particular packet, which you can do it like in the, uh, in the version for the GUI. So that's the second thing. And, uh, and the basic capture filter, that additional information. Those are the big ones, right? So this course file, you can basically dump something uh, somewhere and just send it over. What else you can do is you can do like, for example, HTTP start. Okay, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> well, HTTP tree, try it for yourself. If you generated enough like web traffic, then you should see something there. Uh, so basically get a stats about the number of like 400s, 500s for your particular server. You can also get the request tree to actually see the requests. Well, this was a, probably not the best capture. Uh, okay, let me do another one. Okay. So I will generate some more traffic. I will go to, for example, wireshark.org. I'll go to Linux. So what I'm doing now is I'm generating more like another capture file with more kind of traffic in it. But I'll try to ask for something that doesn't exist. I can ask for yahoo.com, whatever. Great, cool, done. So I generated almost like 10,000 packets, right? Just now. So when I do it against this file, t shark HTTP minus three, then I will see, oh yo, I forgot the minus Q. Okay, so I will see much more information there. You see basically all the requests that we've done. Has everybody got this? Okay. Besides requests, you can try SIV. Uh, you can try, the interesting one would be IO, PHS. Can everybody see this? IO PHAs. Try that. So you will get a hierarchy, basically how many bytes came on what protocol. Try IO stat. That. Yep, yep. Okay, yes, that. Yep. So basically, you specify the, uh, the interval. How, like, you want to do it every second, your statistics. So, like, you want to do it like every five seconds, like three seconds. So, you specify the interval. Once again. Yes, yes. Well, when you did the cap info, so it actually showed you the speed like for the capture file, how much was being captured. But you can also do it for the connections as well. So we'll do it in a sec. So everybody go this one, right? Uh, so let's try another one. Let's try conversation. So when you do that, it'll say, okay, well, something is wrong. 
doesn't exist, conversation. And you can basically, again, see that all the available form, everything that is available for you. So what, and we are looking at basically conversation. We need to specify the protocol for the conversation. So try ETH, try IP, try TCP, try all of them. Uh, don't forget the minus key option, I guess. Question? Like, sorry. Can, can you give a microphone? Hold on, sorry. I was just wondering, looking at the conversations you have yes. from two IP, uh, would you be able to resolve that? Uh, what do you mean? Would you get uh, to display? So uh, rather than showing IPs, is it possible? Yes, to... yes, yes, absolutely. You know I can show you how to, we can do it. Okay. Yeah, we can do it. It's the next step if you want. Yep. Thanks. If I don't do it, please remind me again. Okay. Uh, so what this allows us is actually it allows us to eliminate one of the common problems. Not, well, to find out who is the ch most chatty on the, on, the, on the wire. Quite often, like, whatever, even in the home, at home, well, somebody is watching some, something or downloading, like, whatever torrents, and the traffic is too slow, right? And whenever you ask, like, are you doing anything? Like, no, no, nobody, nothing. But if you do this, you say, well, whose iPhone is that, right? And then, as you mentioned, we can actually resolve this to a particular person, this iPhone. We can make this permanent. So this will al always show up as that particular person, John's iPhone, for example, whatever. So what I would suggest to do is like you're going to use simple utility like head, for example, to show out like the top, who is the biggest ones. Just pipeline this. So we can do the same for the IP level. We can do this for the UDP, for TCP. So this gives you immediately an idea of basically who is doing what. Because you know like probably who is this IP address and you can resolve that IP address. And then you can tell, well, somebody is on the YouTube or somebody is at the somewhere else. Well, there's some smiles. Okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, so that's the expert functionality, right? You can get a similar one. I'll just quickly show that you can actually get the similar one in a GUI. You can look at statistics and have a look at the endpoints. Not this one. Okay. Okay. Sorry. So you can look at the endpoints at the same kind of different levels. Here you can select what is available. And you will see it, right? Uh, so same kind of thing, what we did on the command line. That's for those who prefer the GUI. That's, everything is on the stats. And you can see that, well, we'll look into that later. Okay. I will show like some of the, f okay. You asked the question about the names, right? Resolution. Okay, well, let's do that. So let's have a look. Who do we have? So we have like this, this address, right? So let's call it some, give it some name, okay. So what we need to do is we create a file. Um, what I'll call it hosts. CD, uh, CD tutorial. So I'll create a file called hosts. 
and I will say that this address is, what shall we call them? Okay. Well, mouse, whatever. All right. So when we do next thing, what we did before, we just, so we had that IP, 214, hold on. Uh, So it's still there. So we need to do is we specify minus capital H and the file, that resolution file, that host file, which is uh, hosts for us. Oh, doesn't show. Uh, okay, hold on. Let's do the not conversion. Let's do the hosts. Uh, yep. Okay. Okay, well, that didn't work as expected. So basically, some the result, I would double check that exactly, but if you had it at the time of the capture, it will work. So resolution happens normally at the time like of the capture, okay. right? What we can do, like, let's, let's still do the same test with the host, but I will specify something like local and easier, right? I will say that 127.0.0.4 is whatever is four, and I will specify that uh, whatever, five is five, and I will specify that uh, zero, two dot two, I will, this is a two network. No, we'll do it later. And I will start a capture. I will start a capture on the local interface. Yep. So when I start pinging, it should show us. It doesn't. Yep, let's try that. Hosts. Actually, let's try this first. We'll write these to resolution. Pcap. Okay, well, it still didn't work. Okay. <laughs> well, I can, yeah, it does work, right? So I'm missing something at this particular point of time. So, so you can basically do not just hosts. The coolest bit is actually not doing the hosts, but it's sometimes a network. So in your, you might have configuration file by now if you launched Wireshark. Have a look if you have like directory dot config in your home directory, dot config, uh, Wireshark. Do you have that? Mm 
Do you? Okay, well, it does, because we haven't done anything. So if you run a GUI, go into face and do some change, and close the file, you will get that directory created. So the way it's created, it's everything in the content is copied from the user share Wireshark. Whenever it's getting modified. Whenever you modify some file, like preferencing something else, the directory, your home directory is getting created, and that modified file is getting copied there. So in here, you can create like, there's a few interesting files in there, right? One of them is like services. That basically shows you how, the resolution of how, what services resolve to what. There are hosts, subnets, and uh, hosts. It doesn't exist here, but you can uh, create, create it here. So if you, if you create it here, then it will automatically be displayed. Sorry? Capital N. Say it again. Yep. Yep, sorry. <laughs> we got it, right? So we see it for. Uh, then um, the cool, another cool thing. So basically what you can do is you can copy this file if you want it for every single user on the machine. You can put it in the user like share over there, share lib. Well, I will demonstrate this like just now. Uh, so user share Wireshark in there. Okay, well, I can't. No, normally, you just use your dot Wireshark, but the group. Okay, let's do it. Uh, hosts dot, uh, dot config Wireshark in here. Cool. So if one, after you have done that, you will never have to specify that option again. So this will happen by default. Uh, so let's do another one without anything like this. So you see that it's already there. I'm not specifying option, so that host file. Even a cooler one, that host file, is the subnets file. So let's, let's have a look at that. Let's create a file, uh, subnets. So in your home directory, .config Wireshark, I create a file called subnet. Subnet. Subnet or subnets? Subnets. And you can say that, for example, everything 127, 0, 0, well, whatever, 0, dot 3, dot 0, like 24 is third subnet. 27, 0, 4, dot 4, is, whatever, 24 is a storage. Um, whatever your topology is. Um, Uh, Wi-Fi, whatever, right? Um. So when, after this, you are doing the capture next time, for those things that are not known, it should actually show us, um, instead of 001, it should show the particular subnet. Let me see if I did it correctly. User share Wireshark subnets. Subnets. Uh, Sorry? Uh, let me, well, in this particular one not. Uh, one zero.
So now you see it. Okay. That's all there. So what this does is basically you don't have to specify every single host, host name, but you can just specify like for those ones that just the whole network. Okay, this is a Wi-Fi network or this is something else, and you will get a display. And this will be saved to a capture file as well, which you will be later able to dump. Uh, be the basically be the minus h minus h hosts. So if I dump this, pick up. And then uh, do the cap infos. No, sorry. Check read cap two Q hosts. Then I should see basically the entries that I put in. So you do not need to uh, give your host file to anybody at all. So they are actually saved in the capture file. So that's pretty cool. It's something to be aware of, I guess, yeah. So if you need to change your basically edit your capture file, there is a utility called edit cap that allows you to do modifications. Um, edit cap. It allows you basically to cut certain packets out of the file, so you can, you can just create another capture file out of this one based on certain parameters. Sorry, there's a question. Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, so the question was, can can edit cap be used to sanitize, basically, yeah, sorry, sanitize files? Um, my answer is actually no, right? Because it basically allows you to do simple manipulation of the file. Like, for example, you want to write a file starting with this time to that time, like only in five minutes that you need. Or you need, like, uh, this number of packets. So, like, you want to specify, for example, snap length. Yep. Right? So, snap length is another cool thing that should be probably everybody should be aware of. So, snap length allows you not to, to dump not the whole packet, but to dump only the first number of bytes. For example, you want like the first like 100 bytes, 80 bytes. You do not need the data. So this would be super useful when, whenever you are doing a capture like of, of huge amounts of traffic. Plus, for example, or like uh, some transfer, like what are torrents, some download traffic. You do not need to, do in, to have another one like to write at all. So what you can do is you can just basically, when you're doing the capture, uh, shark. Uh, you basically specify snap length, whatever you want. I'll say, for example, 80. So that's only the first 80 bytes are actually there. But for you, when you're displaying these, almost everything is sort of the same. You can see the protocol, you can see the source address, whatever. Because all that information is in the first, like, 80 bytes. Or whatever, actually, will be 90 bytes. So that depends on, actually, how much you're trying to capture. So if you are debugging at the, like, Ethernet level, then you don't need like whatever HTTP information, something else. TCP, so just you can stop after the TCP header. So this will then drastically reduce the, your basically your capture file size. And you can do the same kind of thing with the edit cap. Thanks. You can write another file, take your file, which is huge input and create another one which will be just only snap length. And that one you can send by email or whatever, whatever you want. So that is a sort of, in a way, that will be sanitized as well. In a way. There will be still the same addresses, but there will be, won't be the data itself. So that's minus S. Cool. Uh, another question that most people uh, don't know is self-deciphering. And most people find it, they, every, most people think that they need like SSL key to decipher like uh, SSL, private key. Well, you don't. Well, you do if you are like a third party, then you do need a key. But if you are a client and you are connecting to Google, Facebook, somewhere else, 
you do not need to know the private key of Google or Facebook to decipher the traffic that goes to Google. Because that traffic is, um, is um, because you are part of that connection. And you know the same key, you know the key that you use for encryption. Right? So do you, do you already have some capture right, of uh, web traffic? Um, so do, okay, let's have a look. So if you type like SSL, do you have any SSL traffic there at all? No? Nothing? If you did, like then you can type in like SSL, which is a display filter. And you will see the SSL traffic, right? Which is encrypted. Let's do a new one, whatever, to those who haven't done it. Let's basically open, um, open your browser and let's do another capture if you want. If you don't have HTTPS traffic, just do another capture. So what I'm trying to say is that basically you do not see what kind of, what is TLS, which is the same as SSL. You do not see what is, what is inside of it. You don't see it, right? But we can make it visible if you know the key. So what do we need to do to make it like, if you are part of the connection, how can we decipher this traffic to the web server? Uh, on uh, Firefox and Chrome, they are built with the NSS library, which basically allows to pass on one variable when you're starting a program. That variable is called SSL uh, key log file. Let me type it in. This is what it looks like. This variable. Just this variable, right? If you pass this variable when, when you're starting a program, then um, let me shut down the Firefox. So shut down, start it from the beginning. And uh, basically specify whatever file name you want to use. Doesn't matter what it is. and then start Firefox. This is all you need, right? Just this. This bit. So before you do that, shut down your Firefox right now, the way it is. So you, your keys will stay with your computer, right? They don't go public. So your connection is still encrypted. I will not be able to decipher it, nobody else. Uh, instead of Firefox, you can use like uh, uh, Chromium or Chrome, whatever your favorite browser is. Has everybody done that? A tail party, you don't need that. I'm, I'll explain why I'm doing that. But has everybody done it? Got the line. So with tail, I'm basically I just I'm just saying I want to watch that file for changes. So you, you yeah, I changed the file, yeah. so let me do it again. Okay, launched, okay. The file has appeared. And I see something being written there. Some client, random, some data. So this is like what is crucial for decrypting at the later stage of the SSL connections. If you don't have this data, you will not be able to decrypt it without knowing the private key on the, uh, on the, on the server, as uh, provided that they do not use forward secrecy. If they use it, then even knowing that key, you will not be able to decrypt it. So everybody sees something like this? Have a look at that file. You can cat it, whatever. Yep, question. Sorry, come back where? Come in line. Okay, sure. So just this, right? 
tail, you know, you can use it separately, you can do it later. <coughs> That's just a way for me to show the contents of the file. So end, ampersand basically says that I want to launch Firefox in the background and then start executing the next command. Retry means that um, basically minus F will look for changes in the file and display them and retry will keep doing, do, do, will keep looking for the file even it did not exist in the beginning. Because if I did not use retry, it would just fail initially and that's it. Because the file was not there initially. Okay? So we've got that file. Uh, let's have a look. Where's Firefox? Uh, okay. So go to some secret website. Uh, you can go to whatever, google.com. Do some search for a secret Secret Santa, what is that? Secret, I don't know. Terror, well, something else, I don't know. Cool. Okay, good. So I got some, some data, ooh, yeah. So let's go to some other website, whatever. Anything, anything you want. Which will be encrypted, hopefully. HTTPS. Anything super secret, right? Anything. Cool. So now you can close the Firefox if you want to, or you can leave it running, it's up to you. Entirely up to you. But what we will do is we'll first decipher it in, decipher it in the GUI, and then I'll show you how to do it on the command line as well. So in the GUI, well, I will stop. Uh, hold on, okay. With me, I. Okay, I did not start actually the capture file. Okay, I, sorry. So I'll do it, which is actually fine. Um, which is actually a good example. So I will start capture, which I didn't start and I should have started. I'll start writing um, some file, HTTPS, uh, HTTPS, uh, TMP, TMP, HTTPS. PCAP, and I will do more activity there for myself to generate the traffic. I will do another search, deals, right, okay, shopping, I'll do another one here, whatever, um, okay, close this. And uh, what else? Oh, so I generated some traffic, good. And I will do something else, HTTPS. Uh, whatever, Commonwealth Bank. Done. Okay, um, so back to the GUI. Now I want to open this file that I'm capturing. I'll stop the capture. As, I'm, as I showed to you, I will do cap infos just to see what it's like, what is actually, what is in the file to get an idea how big it is. And where I, I should even try opening it. If it is like gigabytes in size, I should give up. Uh, and uh, I will open it in the GUI. So this was uh, TMP, TMP HTTPS. So the file is opened. So everything is like if you do SSL traffic, you see like it's all SSL, right? You do not see nothing decrypted, nothing at all. So if you wanna see it decrypted, what we should do is uh, go into the uh, edit and then preferences. Everybody go there? And uh, protocols? Everybody go there? And then you can just type in on like browse to SSL.
Got there? OK. So and uh, here at the bottom, in the premaster secret log file name, browse to the file, for, to the file that you have created. TMP log file. OK. Done? And just click Enter. And oops, you, now you see the HTTP. See that? So something that was like secret to you, now it became visible. Question? It's a library thing. Which library? NSS. That's a Mozilla NSS library. Uh, that's security services, network security services. And that's another thing to be aware of. Like if you will try this with curl, for example, with links, links, this will not work. As long as they're built with, like, because by default, most uh, distributions build them with uh, like no TLS or OpenSSL. Normally it's OpenSSL, so that will not work. But if you rebuild curl with uh, an SS library, it'll start working, right? So by, by basically uh, Chrome, Chromium, and uh, Firefox, they're using this by default, right? So you see that? Everybody got it decrypted? Anybody not yet? OK, we'll wait for you. Those who have done it, they can do another. Well, well we are still waiting for others. You can go to File and Export Objects. It's just for those who have done it and just one extra exercise. And say, like, export like HTTP objects. And say, got that? And say, save all. Create a new uh, directory, export objects. Let's create one. Objects. And just say, choose. It's OK. And then basically in the directory, TMP, you will see all the objects basically from the capture file. Well, let's do something interesting. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's just a bonus thing. Yeah. So you should see something more interesting, I guess, than I am. Okay, everybody, and that came from SSL, decrypted actually, decrypted SSL. So you can dump all the objects from your capture file. By the way, this functionality in Wireshark itself is only, only available in the GUI. It's not available for T-Shark yet. But you can use other tools like TCP Extract, TCP. Um, there's a number of them that can do it. Everybody go decrypted, needs help. Has everybody decrypted SSL? Can I get a show of hands who did? OK. Who is still struggling? Yeah, th that's fine. So you go file, uh, so edit, preferences, protocols, SSL, got that? Sorry, question? Fox proxy. Sox proxy. OK, what about it? Uh, so the question is about some Sox proxy. I'm not sure what, uh, well, this is a client thing. It's, it's, it depends on whatever your client is, right? If your client is built with the NSS library, you will be able to do this. Some other libraries might support other variables, and, and you will be able to do it. 
Again, if you write your own program, you should also be able to dump your own keys. This is just for the stock, right? So I think this is a very useful functionality that many sysadmins just are not aware of. People quite often ask for the private keys of the, of the service, which is not the right thing to do if you're debugging like, yep. Another question. Uh, I just click browse. Sorry, so the question is how did I add the file? You just browsed it. So once again, I'll show once one last time. Edit. Edit. Preferences. Protocols. And then SSL. And the last, the bottom file is the SSL key log file. Name it whatever you want, right? Did we get that? No? Okay. Well, we can do, we will do the same thing on the command line. For those who didn't have success on the GUI, there's an old command line that we can do it with, right? Okay, let's, let's do the same thing on the command line. So we got the capture file. Was it HTTPS? What was it called? Um, Okay, um, so if I just read the file, then it will not be decrypted. Okay, but this is like not related traffic. Uh, okay. Uh, the address. What? Where was the capture? Uh, SSL. Cool. So I'm not actually seeing like, I just see there is some traffic, but I don't see what it is. Cool. So how do I do it on the command line? So there is a switch for, for like for, uh, to get information about a di different dictionaries, different parameters for the Wireshark. It's a capital G switch. Sorry? It's a capital G switch. And if you do a capital G with a question mark, okay. Um, for some reason, didn't doesn't work for me for the for the normal user. I'll do HTTPS recap. Uh, capital G. Capital G. What's wrong? Capital G. Just try T shark capital minus capital G question mark. Should do something like this. Try that. Do you see that? Yes, now? Yes. yes, good. And then, so basically, you can request different information about the internal, like to Wireshark, about the settings and like plugins. Well, if you try like plugins, for example, it'll show you the different plugins that are loaded. Protocol supported, like it's a. Um, okay, so try different ones. 
the, the, the one that we're interested in right now is the preferences file. Prefs. Like do like T shark minus capital G like current prefs. And you'll see all the basically the settings that are take, taking effect right now. Does everybody have it? So once again, can everybody see that? Can everybody do that? You can also do default prefs. Okay. And in our settings, basically, let us grab for SSL. Well, perhaps let's grab, uh, grab SSL. Do you see anything that could help us? Keylog for R, cool. So that's the parameter that we will need to specify. So I did it against default prefs. But if you did it against current prefs, OK, well, still nothing. OK. Because this is root. Because I'm root, right? So let me do it again. T shack uh, minus G current prefs SSL. OK, still nothing. Still not set up. Cool. Maybe if I close this, it will show up. No, it didn't. It's OK. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to specify this particular parameter, like SSL key log file on the command line. Okay, I just forgot. That's key. So that's, I believe, that's a minus O option. Minus O, so we'll say SSL. Key lock file equal TCTMP. The SSL key lock file, I think that's what it is. back okay that's it right so now we should see the crypted traffic um, this be a sec. SSL so basically you shouldn't actually type it in from me you should find out this variable yourself. So do like capital G current prefs and grab for SSL. So you should learn to fish rather than just like get the fish. <laughs> because I don't remember this and I do not want to remember actually these things. The way I do is I try to use the manual pages, I try to use command line to get the information rather than remember it. So everybody got there? Cool. So now we can uh, filter out a particular session. So let's uh, once again use the DZ uh, option, conversation TCP, to see who we were talking to. Or maybe uh, uh, HTTP, uh, HTTP requests. No. Should it be? Uh, request. Aye. So let's grab for whatever. Micro. Aye. And the minus key. Um, 
like home back, for example. Right, that's these requests. Um, so let's try to find an IP address. Hosts. Uh, let's, what are we going to decipher? Commonwealth. Okay, com bank. Uh, okay, and we'll just say that. Uh -huh. I want to only see information where Commonwealth is involved. Well, I just, I just did the SSL key, basically, and I did, did the trick. So this information was actually encrypted. If I use this without a, basically without this key, then I should not see it, and I don't. Fireback. I haven't used Fireback myself. Or any, any other browser development tool. Uh, well, you see, bar, uh, you need to write. So uh, this is like the usefulness of this is actually that you have a capture file. There is a proof of whatever was happening. Yes, yeah, so you have a re way to record that session, and the other side, the other developer that you're talking to can replay it, then you're fine. You don't need to use this. But this is a common tool that can, anybody can use, right? You can do this capture, you don't even have to do it. You can ask your network team to do this. You can ask somebody else to do this. And all you need like, to get that file later or send the other team later and just give them the, that particular file, SSL keys file, right? And they will be able to see everything. Plus, it's not just like uh, if you're doing in Firebug, you only see at the level seven or, like, or, the, or the SI. You only see the, what, what you see. But you don't see the trouble, for example, the DNS took too very long maybe to respond. You'll not see all that information. But this records everything from, from the bottom layer, layer to the layers up. That's great. So normally on the service, you don't have five back anything on the server. Um, so has everybody managed to decrypt on the command line? No? Well, we'll wait for some people. Does anybody need help? Silence, okay. Okay, everybody got, it? got here? Shall we go on? Who wants to go on? So half, half are still writing. Uh, so what's the, what's the problem? What are the problems that people are hitting? You have not decoded it? Uh, the reason you might not decode it is if you you file, you basically start it. Um, you need to, to have, if you started a session, like your SSL session, before you started the capture, you will not be able to decode this. Okay, so why don't you, uh, 
Okay. Well, if you want, we can take it. Uh, we can do it after this training. Particular, just keep going on. Keep recording. We'll fix that. Okay. Another cool thing that I would like to show you is um, how like GUI actually and like command line interact as well. So I will launch GUI again. <laughs> And I will open that file, for example, which will actually decrypt for me, because the settings are still saved. Um, so the cool one, one of the great things is actually so-called profiles. So the profiles that allow you basically to have different settings for working with T Shark and Y Shark, very different settings. So, for example, at the bottom right corner, if you open like, your GUI interface, you can, uh, you can see the active profile in place. Uh, yeah. Okay. Bottom, bottom right corner? No. Okay. Can you see that? Let me check the resolution. Okay. okay, can you see that? Great. So the bottom right corner, just click on the profile. And you will see a few profiles over there, right? So if you right click it, if you right click it, then you can say, for, say for example, uh, new and give it some name, create some profile, whatever it is. For example, I will create one, uh, I don't know, IP. I'll call it IP for myself. Cool. And just say OK. And basically, I switch to the profile immediately, right? So now, in the file, let's go edit uh, configure, uh, preferences again. And change, the, well, I will change the layout to make it more, in my opinion, to make it more useful. So I will have basically uh, all the packet list on the left, add information about the packet that is being highlighted on the right. Right? So I save that, yeah? Now, if I go back to, a, to choose a different profile, that information, that, that's kind of gone. But if I go back, it is still there. So you can uh, create multiple customizations depending on whatever you're working on. For example, your information about your SSL key log file that you used is stored, is stored in a profile. Right? So you can have multiple profiles that will have different settings for the same SSL key log file or different settings for whatever. Let's do some more changes. Let's, for example, uh, modify uh, the columns. Uh, say, well, I want to display an additional column in here that might be useful to me. Uh, what shall I pick? Well, TCP flags. Well, this is IP profile. Um, probably I don't need it. Let's do it at IP level. Let's do IP flags. You right click on that one and say apply as a column. And you will see it there. Do you see it? Everybody done it? So once again, so I will click some other like total length. So you write so basically in the in the packet, or you can open a packet. Oh, no, yeah, don't. So in the packet information, just select a field that is of interest to you and you would like to see as a column, and then right click on it and say, show it as a field. Time to leave, for example. Apply as a column. Can everybody do that? Great. Okay, so obviously if you switch to a different profile, you will not see this anymore. 
And obviously, if you switch it as well, uh, so let's go back, that was IP. And I will go to the same SSL key preference that we did. You will not see it here. References, protocols. So it's not set up here. So this is a fresh profile in this example. But what you could have done is you could have created a, say like manage profiles and uh, co basically copied, copied the profile. Uh, it was, you can, so instead of creating a new one, you can just say copy profile. And that profile will have all your settings in them, including the SSL key profile, everything. So I would, like, this is one of the coolest features that I would recommend, like, if you use, like, Wireshark or T-Shark daily, because this can save a lot of time. If you're analyzing, for example, just IP level data, you do not want to do, get distracted about the TCP and everything else, right? So what you can do is you can, you can basically disable all those protocols. How you, how you do that? You go, where is it? Uh, you go into the view, internals, supported protocols. Uh, hold on, it's not this one. Analyze. Analyze enabled protocols, that's what it is. And you can just basically say disable all, for example. Which, if you do that, then you will basically, you don't know, there's no such thing as a SSL. Everything is unknown. Everything is unknown. And then you can make your way up to only that information that you actually need. So I will go back to analyze enabled protocols and find out, for example, Ethernet. Uh, enable all of them. The cat, all that. And then I should see something. Now I see some Ethernet level information. Right? But I want to see, for example, up to IP level. So we'll go back and uh, say again, what was it? Analyze, enable protocols. Look for IP. And say I want to enable IPv4, IPv6. Just enable all of that. And now I see the IP level information, right? This is like what I wanted, for example, for this pro profile. So I want to have a one profile for IP that will only have information that is relevant to IP, like source, destination. I don't even need the, the protocol. I don't even need this. I can hide this. Uh, remove this column. I don't need it. I want the flags. I want some additional information like differentiated services. I will say apply it as a column. So whatever information I need like for working with this protocol is here, right? Then, for example, I want to have another one for TCP. I can, what I can do is, yeah, I'll say manage profiles again. And I will copy this one. I will say copy and I will call it uh, TCP. So now I am in the TCP, which has got the same settings. And now I will enable one more protocol in here. Analyze, enable protocols, uh, TCP. It will enable the TCP related ones. So now I see the TCP information about TCP. Got that? And here, I might not need the same columns that I needed for, the, for analysis of IP. I might just take them out. I don't need the source. I don't need destination. Well, maybe I do. OK, cool. Um, like length, I don't need it. But I might need something like just the related to purely TCP. For example, source address. Destination port. Relative sequence number, like that. Cool. 
So that's for the GUI, right? Now comes the cool part, because the settings that you did right now, they're actually applicable to the command line as well. So if we get back on the command line, and we uh, basically specify, uh, we don't even need none of these, we specify capital C at a profile name, we'll get this, Columns for like IP uh, uh, or TCP, it'll be something else. So we get different kind of columns in here. It's highly cost customized. So let's let's do one just to make it more more easy to understand. Like I will I will have a look at another look uh, like at what I've L two. And I will delete all the columns from here to make it kind of more visible. And I will leave only like time and source and uh, protocol. That should be enough, right? Just these columns. This is a L2 profile for me. So go to the command line and I say L2. So it shows only those particular columns for me. So I find this incredibly useful as well. But obviously, if you don't use GUI ever at all, you don't have to specify this either. What you can do is you can say basically, instead of even profiles, which you can still use, but you can just say minus E, uh, sorry, uh, say capital T fields, and then with minus E, specify the fields that you want to display. For example, IP address. And you see only IP addresses here. You see both source and destination. If you want to just see source, you say IP source. You got IP source. You can repeat this and say IP to destination. You got destination as well. Sorry, I did not hear that. I. Can you help? Like, sorry. Uh, this is the fields you display. It's not the filter that you apply to the data. You can do that independently. So if you only want to see uh, a certain host, you put a filter and that. That's correct. So this is for the display, for the not for filtering anything. This is just like basically shows what fields you want to see. How can I get the fields? To what? Okay, how can you get the list of fields? That was the question. Uh, you can again use the T shark minus capital G and say basically uh, fields, but that's a huge list. Obviously, you can grab for it, but that's going to be huge as well. It's big, right? So, but but you can get them from here. The way I would recommend to approach that uh, is one option is you go to the GUI. It's when you can get the, uh, pro the basically field name, which is shown at the bottom. Have a look at the left bottom corner. It show you, shows you actually that field, what is it called? TCP.length. So if you use that one, you can immediately use it here. TCP.length. You see that additional one? So whatever is of, out of, of interest to you, let's go back to whatever, TCP. Like, what field would you like to display, for example? Pick up one. OK, well, options. Let's, let's have a look at this one. So you see at the bottom, it displays tcp.options. You see this? This is what you would use to display that field. So we go back on the command line and say tcp.options. And you see those options. Uh, that's not in some format. Well, these are the options, but it's just some format. Uh, OK, IP options. So what you can do as well is you can say here, like tcp.options. And you see in, the, in this drop box, you can see all the different parameters, the possible value, um, possible fields. 
This is, by the way, this is what is called display filter. For example, you want to see a particular option or just TCP, well, uh, TCP option length, for example. If you click on this, then you will see only the packets that have this option set up. Only. This is a display filter, which you can also use on the command line. Uh, or you can basically specify it should be equal to a par particular parameter. <coughs> so by the way, if you want to do filtering, so it's quite easy. Uh, on the, you by basically find the value that you're looking for, the way it looks. For example, uh, like destination port like this, well, uh, let's do something, flex, push. Let's have a look at something that has a push flag set. You say basically prepare as filter, select it. And we've got this filter in here, right? That's, that's one of the ways to do, by the way, display filtering. The easy way. Which you can later use, by the way, on the command line in the same way. Excuse me, sorry to interrupt, but yes. I'm afraid we're out of time for this okay, talk great. now. Um, will you be sticking around to take questions afterwards? Yes, absolutely. All right. Well, thank you very much, Sergey, for that tutorial. <laughs>